today's episode, we're going to be discussing slime farms um, and how you can build your first slime farm and how you can progress it so that it uh, continues to meet your needs for slime as your needs grow. And we're going to discuss first how to find a good area to start a slime farm and how you can start one early on. And, uh, you know, as you gather more resources, as you get more tools, you can expand its efficiency and and whatnot so that it uh, continues to satisfy you. And let me start by saying this isn't, there isn't a competition. You don't have to have the most extreme slime farm. You don't need a million slimes, especially if it's just you on your own solo world. What's good enough for you is good enough for you, and that's all that matters. Um, so with that being said, let's kind of get started into this. First things first, I'd like you to welcome you to my little starter home here in the desert. All right, it's not much, but it's mine, okay? And this is our little place here. We got our little sink and nice little area for bed. We got some storage going, our first little table where we could sit down and have our meals. It's not much, but it's ours, and it's home sweet home for us. We even have our first horse. This is Trouble here. He's a, he's a little green, so we can only saddle him every now and then, but he usually tries to throw us off, so we're working on taming him. Uh, and here's our first visitor. Hello there. How are you, friend? Oh, you give us cocoa beans. That's very nice of you. So anyway, guys, welcome to our desert oasis. And I heard there's even a slime chunk nearby, so we're going to explore that. So when it comes to finding a slime chunk, a which is basically a chunk or a 16 by 16 X and Z uh, square that allows slimes to spawn. The easiest way to do it is use a web app, okay? And the play, where you're going to go is chunkbase.com. And when you're at chunkbase.com, you're going to go to the slime finder. You're going to click on apps, and you can go to slime chunk chunk finder. And then while you're there, go ahead and punch in your seed. Um, and then once you have your seed plugged in, uh, you can f click Find Slimes. And the Legacy Console and the Java Edition are going to be the same. And all you need to do is punch in your coordinates to where you are. So if we take a look here, I can plug in negative 75, and then all it needs is your X and Z. And then I can plug in my Z, 473, and I can find where I am on that map. So once you've punched in your seed and your X and Z coordinates and you click go, it's gonna come up with a lot of little green boxes showing you possible slime chunks. And usually about one out of 10 chunks is a slime chunk. Ideally, you wanna find an area that's got several of them near each other. I don't like them sharing sides. I like them to be kitty corner to each other, if that makes sense. Um, because it makes it a little bit easier to isolate a single chunk. So anyway, find an area that's got several chunks, and I already have here. And what I recommend doing, before you start worrying about digging the whole chunk out all the way to the sky, let's first make sure we have slime spawning in our chunk. So I know here I have a chunk that's between negative uh, 80, 480, and negative 65, 495. So those are my coordinates. So what I like to do first is grab my tools, and I like to dig my way down. And slimes are going to spawn under Y40, other than in the swamp. So what I like to do is maybe go down to about Y30. And then once you get down to Y30, right about here, you're going to... Oh, look at this. You're going to dig out a little room. Okay, and this room shares those chunk borders. So what I've done here is I've got negative 80... 480, which is the corner of one of my rooms. And I just marked it just outside the corner with something so I know. So within all four of these spires of gold is a 16 by 16 chunk. And make it at least too high, this room, and dig it all out. And then once you have it dug out, the best thing you could do is dig a tunnel that goes at least 30 blocks away from this edge. Right about 30 blocks is about perfect. <clears throat> and then this is going to be your little AFK spot. I just AFK here for a while. Now, as you can see, I've already lit up some local caves. I didn't go crazy. You don't need to go crazy. Do what you can handle. Um, obviously, the the more you do, the better the rates you're going to get. But if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for you. So I've come out here about 30 blocks, and all I've done is I've waited for a while. And as you wait, you'll see if slimes spawn in. 
Now the rates here are going to be slow. Um, that's because of the size of the spawning platform, but also the fact that it's got all these blocks above the ceiling. But you can see I have a couple little slimes in here, so that's a good sign. And since I've laid it up the platform, no other mobs can spawn. It's only going to be slimes. So in doing this, I know that slimes can spawn here. If I don't see any slimes spawn in, then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the chunk base, and I'm going to look for the next green block box, and I'm going to try it again. And if you find an area with several right next to each other, then all you have to do is maybe jump over to another one, dig out that hole, and try it there. So it makes that simple. Well, guys, now that we know that this... 16 by 16 chunk is producing slimes. Why don't we get our first little farm set up? So this will be very early game with just a couple basic necessities and the mining that you've done to get to this point. I'm sure you've gathered the resources necessary. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to want to dig our way down to the bedrock. because That's just going to make the rates better. And then it's going to allow us to have a nice foundation on which to build and improve this slime farm as we go. So let's kind of take a look at what a first slime farm would probably look like. Oh, we've got a big guy in here. Let's kind of watch him. Now this is all based on wandering. Uh, this isn't baiting them with anything. This is just watering. This is just keeping it very simple. But you can see he jumps down. He lands in the three wide trenches on the edge. And that's the 16 by 16 chunk there. Lit up so only slime spawn in. And on each side, there's split water, and it's going to divert them to the corners. And in the corners, I got magma blocks, which you can get in deep ocean. You can get in some of the underwater cave, some of the uh, caves that are uh, watered, or you can hop over the Nether. Look at them split there, and you can see what they're doing is they're getting pushed into those magma blocks by the water, right up against. So I just put fits there so they can kind of straddle that a little bit. And I just got a few hoppers underneath, and then we, uh, next to these hoppers, I've got a little cart, or a cart, I've got a chest here, that's gathering some slimes from them. So it's just a very simple, very cheap, you know, it uses a little bit of metal for the hoppers, but all that you're gathering, just coming down here and making this hole. Very simple. With just a collection on either corner, gathering up slimes. You gotta give them enough room they can fall down in there. Even the big guys at enough height they can spawn in. Ooh, look at this, a couple of diamonds right here. And I've marked again the outside corner so you guys can clearly see that. So this would be a great little starter farm. Let's hop up here and take a look. So after letting this run for a little while, I've got 10 in this chest. And I've already gone ahead and dug a, myself a little trench around the outsides. And you can see here's bedrock. So I'm at Y4, so Y4, there's Y3, this is Y2 down here. So, you know, I've, I've done this, I've built the um, that first spawning platform three blocks above that. That's going to uh, allow us to not only have the height we need to allow them to drop and set this up, but later we could use that height as we improve this farm. So I've dug the trench going all the way around so it's easy access for me to get to all these chests and then we can use this trench later on as we improve the farm. I got 30 in this one. Let's keep looking. You know, this isn't going to be anything stellar, but it's going to be just all that we need to kind of get us going early on and improve the number of slimes we have. So we got 30 something in. We got 30 something in there. And just, you know, the great thing about this farm, I built a little AFK spot down in this tunnel. But as you're working on your house above, this is still going to produce, you know, as long as you're within 128 blocks of it. Um, so it's a great way to start this out. So what we could do now to make this even better is we can go ahead and dig out this hole all the way up. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Now that I've got my little starter farm in here, I've got a little collection of slime. It's time for me to make this thing even better. Oh! Hi guys, welcome back. I didn't know you'd be stopping by so soon. I was just doing a little bit of renovating on the house. Expanding a little bit as we, uh, as we expanded in the world. So let me show you what I've done so far. Well, I've managed to gather another horse and they've even produced a foal, so that's great. But anyway, you guys are interested in the slime farm, so let's take a look. Well, I finished digging the hole. And, uh, just in the process of digging, I haven't really done any AFK time or anything. Just been digging. And I can already tell this thing's producing a lot more slimes. Just having the, uh, 
all the sky above the spawning zone so that way all spawn attempts are going to be at this lowest sub chunk here and it's going to make the math a little bit easier on the back end so it's going to produce more and more slimes for us. So let's take a look at what we've gotten while I was doing my digging. Oh, we got 50 in there. And let's see what we got here. We got almost a stack in this one. Not too shabby. Wow, we've got two and a half stacks in that one. And two and a half in that one. So maybe seven, eight stacks. So that's not too bad off of just digging a hole above them. But you can already tell that it's it's definitely improving the rate at which they spawn. Okay. And as long as I'm about 30 blocks away or more, you know, they're going to keep spawning in here while I'm working on my house and doing other things. So let's talk about how we can improve this. For now, let's just keep focusing on increasing the rate at which they spawn. Because we're certainly not at the point where we need to worry about killing them any faster, we just need to spawn more of them faster. So, what we could do is simply just add a couple more floors to this. So let's work on that for a little while. We'll come back here. We got a little room back here. And what makes this easy, with all the wood we've collected along the way, we've smelted up some of it. We might as well put a little stone cutter down, because that's going to make this easy. And let's take some of the the wood we've collected, the wood, the stone we've collected, and let's chop it up into slabs because we get a really good return on that. So let's take a look here, some smooth stone slabs. Let's break up some of these. All right, not too bad. So we got a good stack of slabs that we could use. So now let's increase the spawn rate of this farm, and we could do that just by adding more levels to it. So let's work on that a little bit. So we need to go up like this, and let's add the next layer. Okay, so with the floor in, let's light it up so only slime spawns. So come from the corner, one, two, three, four, five, and then go over two, and two that way. One, two, three, four, five, two, two. One, two, three, four, five, two, two. One, two, three, four, five, two, two. And we're going to put one in the middle. It's going to be a little crooked, so don't worry too much about it. Now let's give these guys enough room to jump down. Alright, got it dug out a little bit. Let's go ahead and expand this to keep them from falling down in there and not dying. There we go, and we could do that for all four sides. Well, very nice. Now we've got two floors in. Not too bad. And these guys will eventually just wander their way off and die just like the ones below them. Oh, we got a big one over here. So it's a very simple way to expand the efficiency of this farm just by increasing the amount of spawn attempts we're going to get. And you could do this, uh, you could do this for several floors if you want. Well, that's great. So this is working well, and we can continue to do this. And all you would do is do this again. And place your next floor correctly. And what, what you would do is take this all the way up. Let's go ahead and kind of start these so you can see where what I have in mind here. One, two. Here's the next one. One, two. Here's the next one. One, two, oops. There 
There we go. So take it to about here. Try to keep your Y value at 30 or below where your your spawning floor is. And that's going to help increase the rates. Now, keeping your Y value a little bit under Y40 is going to make the math a little bit simpler. And it's going to increase the rate at which the slimes are going to spawn on these lower platforms, which could increase the overall rate of the farm. So that's where you would build your other levels. So you can continue to do this all the way up. But at this point, let's say that from all this mining we've done, we've collected a decent amount of metal, enough to make a golem. Um, and not only that, but we also have managed to find a pumpkin, and we could carve it to make us a carved pumpkin. So we're going to use that to increase the rate at which they wander off of their off of their spawning layers. And by incorporating iron golems, we can keep up with the increased spawn rate due to having multiple floors by decreasing the lifetime of each spawn by quickly getting them off the floors. So let's talk about how we could do that. Well, well what we could do is we could focus all the spawning attempts to one side by putting golems on one side. So let's change the kill chamber real quick. So by doing that, we're going to get rid of our old water sy collection system. Very good. So now let's go ahead and dig this layer all the way down to bedrock. And you have a couple options. You can either leave this side as a water collection as is, or if you've been successful in clearing out some uh, some underground un underground mine shafts and gathering up some gold and some rails, we can incorporate those to make the collection a little bit simpler. Well, I want to say simpler, but a little bit more efficient. Let's say that. So in order to do that, let's grab a couple things we're going to need. Oh, let's see. So we are going to want a lever some redstone blocks it's going to make this easier mine cart power rails normal rails i think that ought to do it and you're going to look for spots in the bedrock where we can break this out and put a couple of these in here to start powering our rails and let's see so if we were to Okay, so it's gonna let's have it unload on this side because that's gonna be our ladder coming up. So it's gonna end on this side. So let's do this. Let's have it go like this. It's gonna bang it to a block, and it's gonna come all the way over here. And you can use as many power rails as you need. You don't have to do all power rails if you can't afford it yet. I like to have it go past the spawning layers. So let's go to there, we'll have it make its turn, so you can see right there I ran out of power, so that's fine, we'll do that, and it should be the same here, let's have this go down, and let's do this, there we go, that should clean that up a little bit, see if it'll make that. There we go. And this is going to be our exit. So we'll leave it, we'll just leave it like that for now. So now what we could do is using our magma blocks, we'll come up just like this. Not too shabby. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the side here and I'm going to actually block these in.
like that. So the only way they can get out is on this end. So I'll be back once that's done. All right, guys. Well, now we're starting to improve our method of reducing the time each spawn is alive. So what I've done is I've isolated only one side, filled in the wall on the rest. Okay, and what you see down here, what I've quickly done is come up with a little minecart unloader. There's the hopper with minecart going underneath the magma blocks and unloading here, and you should be seeing a tag right about now that'll show you how to build this unloader. I got a little door access here so we can come in here and work on things and whatnot. So now it's time to get our first golem in. So let's get that ready. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to kind of fence him in. So it's right about in the middle. I'm going to go a block above the magma here. And we're going to wall this guy in. Just kind of like that. Let's go up to like this. And the idea is to have the golem aggro um, two floors at once. That's the goal. Let's get a block that the guy could stand on. Let's just do that. Let's design him. There we go. And let's just push him in. And be ready to block him in all the way. Looks like he's bumping stuff in the back. Oops. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Your hitbox is a little bit big. There we go. Hey. Let me put this here, please. Sir. Sir. So I'm going to build this around him, but I want to keep his eyes exposed. So right about there ought to work. And the top could be covered up. Because this will continue as we add floors, we're going to continue to add golems. And with that golem in place, all slimes are going to aggro to him. Slimes on the far end might need a, might need just a minute to wander. Oh, there he goes. He's already aggroed. And then we'll try this layer, all the way on the opposite side. So these ones might need just a minute to wander as they get closer. Because right when they get to here, or so. They're going to be pissed off. So they'll wander up to him. And they'll aggro. And they'll fall off to the magma. There he goes. And they'll die. And then as they die, all their parts are going to be collected by this minecart down here. Oh, right here. And all those the slime is going to be unloaded into this chest. So pretty nice and easy, huh? So then all you do is you copy the same thing all the way up till you hit Y30. So I'm going to work on that now, and we'll, I'll come back. Oh, hey, guys. I was wondering when you are going to come back. Well, I was just doing a little enchanting now that I'm a little bit further in the game here. Even got me some iron armor. Very nice. So anyway, let's show you the progress on the slime farm. Easy there, Silver. How oh, the fool's grown up. Oh, look at this, guys. Throw all that in there. Well, let's take a look, shall we? So, we've got all spawning layers in. Working very nice. Very nice indeed. You can see our golems here. Oh, a couple little guys got in. Might have to adjust the fences here in a little bit, but that's no big deal. If that happens to you, then maybe you just got to adjust the fences a little bit. Just something like that. 
Okay, so let's take a look here. So we've got this golem watching this two floors, this golem watching these two floors, this golem watching these two, that one doing these two, and then the one oddball is this guy. Okay, and all slimes are dropping down onto the magma blocks. We've got a little door here. And then how you do the unloading is completely up to you. Like, I, you, like you've already seen, I've linked the unloader, uh, the minecart unloader. Right now I've just got them on a little clock here that every now and then spits them all out to water and sends them right on up to the top here. And that's basically our farm. Um, and if you want to, let's hop back in. So as far as expanding this even more, if you, if you want to uh, make it even faster, then you could put another string of golems on the other side. I don't think it's necessary, but if you want to further optimize it, that is an option for you. But that means you're going to have to dig out this, uh, these three blocks here, and you're going to have to put magma blocks and, cart and rails underneath. You don't have to use the two unloaders. You can use the same unloader, just have the minecart go over to that side as well and collect all the drops. And that's what I do just fine. And that's pretty much the extent of what you could do with the one farm. And if that wasn't enough for you, or maybe if you were on a big server, a tech server, then all you could do is add a couple more farms. So you have one there, maybe you add one here because there's another chunk there. And with those two farms, you're going to get so much. Because uh, that's what I use on my single player world. And I use a ton of slimestone, as you guys know. And I still have more slime than I know what to do with. Uh, so start with one there. Your unloading system is completely up to you. Well, it looks like we got some more collecting up here. And in just a few minutes I've had this going, I've already got about one normal chest full of items um, ready to go. Well, guys, and that brings us to the end. We've covered quite a bit in this video, all the way from the humble beginnings and setting up your first slime farm, to optimizing the spawning rate, to decreasing the spawn to death time, and lastly, handling some of the product. So I really do hope you enjoyed this video if you do please consider supporting the video with a like subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you know when i go live next and with that guys it was great once again to make a video for you i look forward to the next one this is trav bye for now